And these systems would be run on automation. And this means that humans don't have to do dangerous, repetitive tasks un un unless we want to, of course. Some of us are into BDSM even when it comes to labor, and I guess that's cool. But with automation, that leaves us to discover more things about this world that we are a part of, create and design more amazing things, and talk to that rapper about how their excessive behavior wasn't a real replacement for their mother's love. Now this leads us to access, right? With automation, we'd have access to pretty much everything. RBE would create a rental system or, or like a library for certain things. Rather than having a property-based investment approach, value approach, which requires hoarding and in fact protection, we design a system of interchangeable access, like a rental or library system as we might see today. In a society where I, for example, might drive my car for only a few hours a week at most, does it really make efficient sense for me personally to store this vehicle where it will sit unused for probably 90% of the month? And if you extend that idea to the whole of the goods sector, the realization is that we can actually reduce production, create more efficiency, reduce the use of resources while counterintuitively simultaneously enabling more access of goods to the population when they need it. The term would be strategic access. And that's great since all cars will be driverless and automated an algorithm can now have a panic attack over parallel parking instead of us. So the question is, well, how do we know the demand of these resources, right? Then, and that takes us back to allocating and accounting for these resources, right? The demand will be accounted for too. If it turns out that New York City prefers walking, uh, th we would allocate them less cars and give a few more cars to uh, like Iowa because they need it to get from one cornfield to the next. And all of this would be done with no money in mind. RBE would work on a non-monetary system. And this is the part where the opponents of this idea bring the hammer of capitalism down. The question on everyone's mind is, well, how will we know how what the value of something is? But the third thing is, how do you know without money if what you're doing is actually valuable to people? Right. That's and, and this this sounds like it's materialistic, but it's really not. So if I um, if I give you a painting that I did, you're probably going to take it. Right. It's, blah, it's free. Right. So if I just keep doing paintings and handing out paintings and I never charge anyone any money for them, I don't actually know if people like what I have or really care about what I have. I mean, they may say all these kinds of nice things, right? Here's a tape of me singing Ave Maria. Okay. <laughs> or here's an MP3. Fine, you know. But I don't know if I'm actually applying myself to that which is most useful and valuable and important to others if they're not bidding for me. And, and this, this means that we're going to have to be honest with each other and it's going to be okay to not like something right because it doesn't make or break somebody's career and at this point we would have probably reformed the education system to include a class about how to engage and deal with your emotions self-reflection 101 really or how not to be an asshole even the word career would have to be changed when the idea of monetizing labor is out of the question and we're working on creating a better future for the, the global village, our passions are our careers. Instead of asking, what do you do for a living? People can ask, how are you living these days? Or an even more biting question, how are you contributing to the global human progress? It also means that intellect would be on the forefront rather than physical prowess or status. This also means that we don't have ownership over certain things. We don't need to use money anymore. 
If you really wish to put an end to war, poverty, hunger, territorial disputes, you must utilize all the world's resources as a common heritage of all the world's people. Anything less than that will remain with the same problems that you've had continuously for centuries. We all deserve to have food, shelter, water, health care, and education. And just because we've turned something into a necessity rather than a luxury, that doesn't mean that people can put a price tag on it to exploit other people's needs, like skyrocketing the price of health care or pharmaceuticals or, or removing regulations on a utility like the internet so you can censor and weaponize information. All of these things would be inherent to every single person in the global village.